Hey everyone, Bernard here. Welcome to the Citizen Channel. The day after the night before, yes, the Carabao Cup semi-final at Old Trafford. Uh, fantastic. Dedicated, of course, to the King Colin Bell. Wonderful to see those number eight shirts. I'll have to get a number eight on my, obviously, if you've watched my little tribute to Colin Bell, obviously. I was never able to have a number eight on my shirt as a kid. Have you ever? I don't do it. I don't tend to get names and numbers on my, on my tops, but... Uh, Perhaps I'll, I'll buy a retro shirt. I don't have any old shirts, to be honest with you. Perhaps I'll buy a retro shirt and have number eight put on the back. I think that's uh, my little tribute as well to that. So, yeah, it's great to see that last night, obviously. And so sad, wasn't it, seeing Mike Summer be in the crowd there, obviously uh, tearing up. Uh, well, I've got room to talk, haven't I? Obviously, if you've watched my tribute, but uh, hey, there you go. I, I didn't even imagine I'd do that until I started reading out some of the things uh, Anyway, well, that's how it goes, isn't it? That's how that's how it affects. Nothing wrong with the uh, grown men crying, is there? With, with the, I've seen it at Main Road, or I've seen it at the Etihad. So there you go. I've, I've seen it at a few away grounds as well. You know, not not just tears of joy either. So anyway, yeah, let's have a look back at the game at Old Trafford last night. Fantastic result, of course. Uh, a, comf a comfortable in the end, two 0 win, wasn't it? And uh, yeah, we'll talk about it a little bit more, obviously, in a minute. We'll have a match, quick match analysis. We'll have the, of course, the player ratings. Simon Pukowski in my own um, quirky stats, of course, and uh, then some some headlines, and I'll even I'll even include some Manchester Evening News United player ratings today. That'll be funny because they're not they're not very impressive. I'm not going to read out all the all the stuff that's uh, been written about, you know, all the little comments, but I'll read the scores, which is quite interesting. So I'll even include them today because under special circumstances, obviously. Please, if you're new to this channel, please. Uh, push that subscribe button. If you've got any City following friends, please point me in my direction. I do these City present vlogs, but obviously I do the City history. And as I said, there's a Colin Bell tribute out there as well. Fantastic. I, I love doing that. It was emotional, but I love it. And a lot of people are commenting and saying how great it was. So my, my thanks uh, for everyone who's, who's commented. Fantastic. And thanks for watching it as well. So it's certainly one of my most watched uh, vlogs of, of recent times. Anyway, as far as City, City are concerned, yeah, so, uh, yeah, please push that subscribe button and push the bell notification if you want to know about these vlogs. And you'll also notice some film stuff as well. I do film, I have a little film and TV channel. I do film reviews and information vlogs and what DVDs are coming out to buy, stuff like that. So, TV drama reviews. So, if you've any interest in that or know someone who might be interested again, if you can point them in my direction, get them to sub, that would be fantastic. You get two, I kill two birds with one stone, don't you? You get the best of football as far as Manchester City is concerned and you get the best of film and TV. TV as well. What more could anyone ask? All for free. Hey, there you go. And uh, yeah, please, there's a couple of links on screen uh, for Facebook and Twitter. So I put loads of stuff on there as well and retweet and share stuff. So is there, if you want any followers or friends, just get me on there and I do check every couple of days and follow and friend everyone back. Right, City, yeah, the starting lineup. Two changes, of course, to the Chelsea game. Uh, the team that started last night, uh, Stefan Cancelo, Stones, Diaz, Zinchenko. Fernandino was a captain. Gundogan, KDB, Mares, Foden and Sterling. Subs, Mr. As, uh, well, I'm not, not going to say young Trafford at Old Trafford. Uh, subs, Trafford, I just did, didn't I? Trafford, Walker, Walker and Jesus. There you go. I thought it took weeks to recover from this corona thing. But hey, there you go. Uh, Walker, Jesus, Jesus, Aguero, Rodri, Mendes. Nemecha, Howard Bellis, and Mbetti again. Nice to see him back on the lineup again. Uh, Dilap? Was there no Dilap? <laughs> I have no idea. What, what, I don't know what's happened to Dilap. Uh, yeah, my lineup thoughts. I got 10 right, didn't I? But I did actually say. Um, if no Aguero, Mares would play. So I got ten and a half, really, didn't I? Because I did, I did. We weren't sure about Aguero, so obviously the team I picked. Uh, I think I've got ten anyway. I'm looking at it. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got, I said I got eight and nine the other day, and I got one wrong. But uh, yeah, so I did pretty well there. I think I'm quite, I'm quite chuffed with that. But it's more or less picking itself at the moment, isn't it, with this COVID thing? Uh, yeah, pre-match social media. It's quite funny actually. A couple of the couple of the big guys, City Extra. If you follow them on Twitter, they. Um, 
comment from Lewis and Jordan was that they were buzzing with that team. Uh, very confident, team in good form. Defence is solid at the moment. Come on, you Blues. And then to the other extreme, you got the gentleman Stephen McInerney, obviously from a steam company. And he, he was the opposite. Not that confident with that lineup, to be honest. Think the shape that made the Chelsea performance so great from the other day will be totally different without Bernardo, unfortunately. So, uh, hey, it's all opinions, isn't it? And as you say, it's it's nice in hindsight, isn't it? Oh, you, what an idiot you were. But uh, there you go. So, Quite different views. Uh, and at City Extra, Riyad Mahrez and Fernandino start for Man City this evening with Bernardo Silva and Rodri dropped. I mean, come on, lads. City Extra. Should I mean, Silva was banned. He wasn't dropped. And, uh, you know, to say Rodri was dropped, he's perhaps pushing it a bit. He might have been rested. You don't know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do... I don't try and be too all right. I had my pet watch till the end of the season and said he was going, but that was my opinion. And then once he signed his new contract, I said he might be going because there's no <laughs> no guarantees. But uh, yeah, some people said I think some people put stuff out just to get comments, but I think that was just a bit of bad uh, a bad uh, research there. To be honest with you, yeah, the match summation and stats. The first forty five minutes, yeah, the met, bet ball was in the net three times, wasn't it? Uh, two for City and one for United, but obviously they're all uh, quite well offside, weren't they? I don't think there's any. I don't like. I don't understand this messing about. Just put the flag up when the ball's received. I don't understand it. It's obviously to do with, obviously, whether it's going to be checked on VAR and allowing play to go on and all that. But it just says, I don't know, it's just another aspect of this VAR thing that's very confusing. Uh, nine minutes, a great save. Or a good save, yeah, good to a great save from Stefan from a Bruno effort, wasn't it? It was only nine minutes. It seemed a lot longer into the game to me. but uh, And he I did it with his sort of De Gea-like. I mean... Uh, as you may know, I did play a little bit in goal. I'm not up to the standard, obviously, as even Mr. Stefan or, or anyone. But uh, my instinct when I was going left, I would I would never have saved a ball with my right hand going left. I would have always saved it with my, my left hand. I know De Gea does that a lot. Um, it's similarly going to your right. I wouldn't necessarily try and wouldn't save it with my left hand. I'd save it with my right hand. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't quite understand that because I'm sure you can't get as much. You know, you can't get as far over if you're using your opposite hand to the direction you're going. So, but anyway, it was a good save. <laughs> I'm just talking. Um, you know the details of it, but uh, yeah, it's still a good save uh, by Stefan. Uh, KDB had that shot. That was 13 minutes. KDB, I thought these were like halfway through the half. 13 minutes, that rasping shot, wasn't it? Uh, came off the plate. It looked as though it was going in when it left his foot, didn't it? But it just sort of scared out a little bit. Uh, yeah, and the only other thing I really made note of in the first half uh, was Zinchenko was struggling, obviously, when Rashford was running at him. That was a bit scary. And I did actually comment at half time, and he's a little bit of a backup. I think we need to cut someone watching Zinchenko if it's going to happen. But fortunately, I think United were a different different side the second half, weren't they? They weren't very good at all. But uh, yeah, and the only other thing, I was scared to death at corners because I remember that first corner, they all put men on the front post, didn't they? They looked like giants to our lot. Even our big lads look small compared to their lot. So that did worry me but again that like most of the things United did last night it sort of died out after half time so it didn't become a problem because it was quite even half time I wrote it was quite even United always looked dangerous City not not so much with Mares and Sterling not really clicking I don't think they were I think I think Mares didn't know where he was playing to be honest with you uh, then on to the second half of course uh, Fernandino didn't take long for Fernandino to get booked did it 47 minutes he got booked um, unnecessary well, I don't know 50 minutes yeah great goal I mean I'd, apparently he went in by Stones' his thigh done, didn't it but uh, it could have been another area if you think about what uh, Mr Pep said about him a few few months ago about his you know you know remember so it could have been that I wasn't quite sure what part of the anatomy hit John Stones but he went in the net that's all that matters and no one was offside and uh, it's fairly poor defending from United to be honest with you on 50 minutes uh, no real real attack by United after that there's no real sort of man the barricades was there? it was pretty much all City uh, uh, I did I did lose my stream a couple of times for a minute or two I, I don't think I missed anything too crucial uh, 53 minutes Cancelo blasted over didn't he a great uh, Good shot, so it might have dipped into me, but obviously just kept going up, didn't it? Unfortunately, uh, Sterling had a, an okay header. Actually, I didn't think Sterling played well again last night, but that's uh, saved by Henderson from his header. I, th I thought he did okay to get over it because it seemed a little bit high for him. So credit, I'm not going to pick on him. He, he, he at least he got it on target, which is half the battle, but not a bad save by Henderson. Uh, Sixty-two minutes, Mares was 
brought an okay save from Henderson. So, I mean, that was probably one of the only things I remember Mares doing, to be honest with you. 78 minutes, Cancelo was booked as well. 79 minutes, uh, the only substitution for City, Rodri on and Mares off. I must admit, I thought he would bring Walker on and then move Cancelo over to the left and take Zinchenko off, to be honest with you, because uh, obviously I was worried. But I think the lack of any sort of real attacking intent by United in the second half, I don't think Pep considered doing it he didn't need to do it uh, 83 minutes yeah fantastic wasn't it I mean it just for nothing really wasn't it was it a corner and then it came back to uh, Ferner from a poor header uh, about 22 yards out a nice a nice sort of volley into the corner but I mean you know in my my day we used to have defenders on the pulse and they would have cleared that but hey, it's a slightly different game now isn't it but uh, yeah that's 2-0 if it wasn't over at 1-0 which it more or less was I thought we were going to see it out at 1-0 well no, that was it wasn't it I mean again United never really did anything did they uh, I think there's two or three I think it's three minutes injury time and that was that ref watch yeah Atkinson yeah I gave him 6 out of 10 last night I thought it was ok it wasn't too bad. It's a derby after all. Um, perhaps not as flying in as perhaps in the old days, these days. Are they a quite mild-mannered derby, wasn't it? We'll look at the stats now there. Shots 11 by United, 2 on target. City 12, 4 on target. Possession 39% for United, 61% for City. I think that was a lot closer the first half, wasn't it? Passes 442, United 678 by City. Can pass completion is not fantastic. 84% by United, only 87% by City. But obviously a little bit more nervy, isn't it? A little bit more uh, everyone at them, isn't it, in a derby game. So that's I suppose that's not too bad. Corners for each. As I say, I was a bit worried about certainly two or three of their corners. Uh, fouls nine by United, six by City. That's nice. Usually it's the other way around. Usually it's uh, certainly against United these days. We tend to foul a lot more. Right, player ratings. Here we go. My basic score is six point five. So if a player has a basic standard okay game, is you know, in line with the team's performance, he gets a six point five. If he doesn't, he gets less. If he if he has a better game, he gets more. Simple as that. I'm not sure what Simon Bukowski's. Uh, guide is but he's got some high scores today anyway let's have a look I'll give you Simon's view first and give the score and then my little view after Stefan's so enthusiastic to move the ball and he occasionally had to shout his teammates to tell them the ball was on its way a good save for the cameras early on and another solid performance give him a 7 yeah I'm going to give Stefan 7.5 I was quite impressed with his footwork and everything last night and he said he did that one good save I don't remember him messing up particularly. He perhaps had a couple of long clearances just to, to clear the lines that he had to do. But uh, no, I thought it was all right. As I say, I'm not his, you know, my, my jury's out on Stefan. I've not seen enough of him yet. But I was quite impressed last night. I thought he did okay. Cancelo, an intriguing battle with Pogba that saw him less good defensively than you know, has been recently, but still offered a lot going forward. So he's given him a seven. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I've only given Cancelo a six, and I think I've scraped to six. I don't think he was ever, ever comfortable defending, uh, which, in my opinion, negates anything he gave us going forward. He was OK going forward. If he'd had that goal, then he probably would have got another point extra, perhaps. But uh, he didn't, did he? He's an early man at score, and he, he has those chances. But I'm still, you know, if he's, if he's going to have, you know, one goal a year, I'd rather him not even be up the pitch. I'd rather him stab I mean, back defending. So... Yeah, so I've only given him a six. I don't think I've been too mean there. I mean, let me know what you think anyway. Stone slightly relieved to see the offside flag in the opening minutes. Well, it wasn't his fault, was it? It just bounced off him. There's not much he could do with it. Uh, he did make a crucial difference at the other end. He gets better and better. He's given him a nine. As I said, he's got a bit gets a bit carried away, our Simon, does he? Nine out of ten. I'll give the Stones an eight. Yes, so that's my... And I will say now, that's my second highest score of the, of the day. So, yeah, I'll give Stones an eight. A good, good, solid performance by Stones. We can't complain, can we? He scored a goal as well. What more can we ask? Diaz, a no-nonsense performance. Uh, whenever the ball threatened City's box and also made forays up the pitch without getting a nosebleed and a promising sign for the future. Yeah, so he's give him eight. Yeah, I'll give, I, I would have given the same as Stones, but he didn't score a goal, did he? So I'm going to give him 7.5. As I said, I, I do like to, you know, when we have a performance like that, I would rate the centre-halves the same, but obviously Stones scored a goal, so I'm going to give him, I'm going to give Stones the extra points, aren't I? Uh, Zinchenko United looked to expose him against Rashford. He had a few wobbly moments. He did, yet recovered well. A pleasing return to the side for him this week, and left back spot is his to lose. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, I was gonna mark him less than six point five, but on reflection, yeah, I've been seen obviously just a look and having to think about it. 
Um, it's not his fault. <laughs> I mean, Rashford is, is a pretty good player when he's at full flight. I mean, he didn't uh, perhaps do enough last night, but when you know, a couple of times he did sort of go at him. Zinchenko was struggling, but he's not, he's not a natural defender, is he? Um, it's our fault for perhaps not giving him an extra man back up. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to give him 6.5. I'm going to give the bog standard. As I said, I was only going to give him a 6. But I will give him a 6.5 because I thought he looked comfortable on the ball again. He, he, he had a... He had a these passes were okay. I don't think there's anything too bad. I didn't too, not too many crosses against him. I make a little note and crosses on my little sheet. So I'll give him a 6.5, Zinchenko. Werner, surprise pick ahead of Rodri. I didn't think so. I thought I was. I thought he would play. I, I thought he would be picked ahead of Rodri, to be honest with you, especially against United. I think Rodri was a little bit too cumbersome. Left Fernandez furious early on with a late challenge, but his speedy distribution was at the heart of City's brightness, and his late finish was terrific. So he's given him a 9 against Simon. Well, my highest score, so you probably know what's going to come later, don't you? 8.5, good, solid performance, and a goal will push you. you know, I'll give him that extra as well for the goal. I mean, absolutely fantastic. I mean, you know, can we keep him for another two or three years? Don't let him go too early like we have with David Silva, but uh, you say, he probably won't put those performances in all the time, but I thought it was excellent last night. Gundogan, an early goal ruled out for offside. Looks to be enjoying being given more freedom up the pitch. A busy performance in the best possible way. Now, Simon's given me an eight. I, didn't, I thought Gundogan was was pretty poor. I, I, I thought it was awful. I had a, he had a great game against Chelsea and I made him my man of the match, but I thought he was bang average to poor last night and I'm not even going to give him the standard. I'm even six or so well but you know, I'm well different to Simon Bukowski I just thought he was poor I had three or four big crosses on my little sheet of paper where he may have uh, you know been not got back quick enough or he passed to the wrong guy and there wasn't many ticks I have ticks and crosses and I'm afraid Gundon didn't get many ticks last night so there you go he's only got a six from me sorry sorry uh, Ilkay KDB, you can do things that other players simply cannot. Changing tempo in an instant. Unfortunate to see a shot come back off the post. Classy without getting into top gear. He's giving seven. Yeah, I've agreed with seven. Um, he just edges that extra point. Uh, but he did seem a bit overly keen to, to release it far too quick last night. He was sort of looking to get rid of it all the time rather than sometimes take it, take more time. I'm not sure the, the, the thinking behind that. I know he, he does that occasionally, and obviously if it works, it's fantastic when it does. But last night, it, it didn't work so often, and I thought, I thought it was a bit too keen to get rid last night. So, But I will give him a seven, because obviously apart from, say, that shot could, could have easily gone in, and he did, again, he's our, he's our main guy, isn't he, let's be honest about it. So I will give him a seven, but... Uh, yeah, I did, I did think that was his fault last night. Sterling, will he ever score against United? Probably not if he plays like that. He found space well, linked up with De Bruyne to good effect and was bested by Shaw on a couple of occasions when in a promising position. Yeah, I thought Shaw played OK, actually. I didn't think it was that big. So, you know, he's a little, carries a little bit of weight. He's a bit of a thug, but I thought it was all right. I wouldn't mind him as a left-back. Uh, we'll talk about it after. But... Uh, yeah, he's given him a six, Sterling. I give him a six. I give him less than the average. I thought some poor decisions. I mean, he's you get the one on ones where he literally just runs into players, you know, and he, or he takes the ball around him and just the ball runs out and stuff like that. I'm just Sterling, he's he's having a you know like he did for a lot of last season. He's having a flipping nightmare at the moment, isn't he? Foden certainly had the better of his duel with Wan Bissaka and finished well when offside in the first half. It was his dangerous ball that created the goal for Stones. Yeah, he's given him an eight, Simon. Again, this has been he's, has been very. Today, uh, Simon, I give him a seven. I'll give him better than the average because uh, I think uh, he does have a tendency to go offside, doesn't he? He's, he's too bull in a china shop, as Pep, like as I call what Pep calls him. Um, so, Ala Jesus, so he's, he's, he does just drift offside far too much, but he was solid last night and he's working some nice little touches as well. So, I'm going to give him a seven anyway for uh, for that. Mares asked to play a central role and struggled to find space to thrive in an even contest. A worthy sacrifice for the collective. You sacrifice players, it's 11 versus 11. Can we afford to, to carry people? You know, I mean, Sterling wasn't at his best, and we had Mares not at his best. So that's literally nine, you know, that's two players who are not pulling the weight. Uh, Simon's given him a seven. I've only given Mares a six. I mean, it may not be his fault uh, that he's not, you know, he's playing in a funny position, but at the end of the day, you're playing funny, at least. Uh, at least annoy people, at least, <laughs> at least get in the way and stuff. And I, I just don't think he did. So I wasn't impressed with Mahrez. And I, I, I'm not going to forgive him for the fact he was asked for, to do something weird. 
yeah, the, the substitution was too late, so there's no marks for the substitution. Um, Rodri, who came on, obviously. Yeah, my man of the match, yeah, if you looked at those scores, and yeah, not necessarily, sometimes they'll give it a man of the match, even if they haven't got the highest score, just just because uh, that's how it works. That's just how, 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 my, how my mind works. But I'm definitely going to give it Fernandinho. He got the highest score. And I think the fact he's sort of reliving his youth and he had a great, I thought he had a great game last night and he wound up Bruno, so what more can we ask? It's fantastic. Yeah, just a couple of uh, post-match interviews. Guardiola, of course, I just wanted to mention this uh, for what it was. Says our 2-0 win, which secured a fourth successive Carabao Cup final appearance was for Colin and his family. That's fantastic. Of course, this is for Colin Bell. He said, I'm sure he will be so proud. It's not about winning or losing, but playing who we are. I think Colin would like that feeling. The club belongs to the players and the past players made this club. We want to continue the legacy he and Mike Summerby and many others players created. Today is a special day for us. It's an honour to dedicate the victory on behalf of all the team to him and his family. And all the fans would agree with that. John Stones, yeah, he had a quick word with John Stones. He said, I think everyone's so hungry to win trophies, and no matter what game it is and who we're up against, the winning mentality of the lads is something so special. It's something that's very rare in football, maybe for a team to be challenging for so many years, and it's something that we pride ourselves on and something we'll continue. He said of his mate, of his partner, Ruben Diaz, it's a pleasure to play with him, how well he's done coming into the club and straight away playing so many games, playing so well. All credit to him. I'll take a bit for him too. Hopefully we can keep moving forward. Yep, quirky stats. Up to Joe Pep has won more League Cup fixtures than any other Manchester City manager in the club's history. 21. Fantastic. The home team has ended on the winning side in just three of the last 14 matches between Manchester United and Manchester City. It is now three in the last 15 matches. So there you go. Manchester City have lost just two of their 23 League Cup matches under Pep, but both defeats versus Manchester United. So, yeah, we've only lost two of their 24 now, so there you go. Kevin De Bruyne is making his 200th appearance under Pep for Man City. Only Raheem Sterling, with 218, has made more appearances for the club under the manager, the Catalan, they call him here. Manchester City are the only second side to reach four consecutive League Cup finals after Liverpool, who did so between 81 and 84. Well, we're an exalted company there, aren't we? Fernandinho, 35 years, 247 days, is Manchester City's oldest scorer in the League Cup since Frank Lampard, 36 years, 96 days. Sheffield Wednesday, September 2014. Manchester City have now had 16 different goal scorers in all competitions, more than any other Premier League team. John Stones has scored his first goal for Manchester City in 1,162 days with his previous one coming against Napoli November 2017 in the Champions League. Stat City, Pep is taking charge of his, took charge of his 13th Manchester derby. Only Les McDowell with 26 has taken charge of more fixtures against United as City manager. Man City have failed to score in their last three matches against Man United. Obviously this was before the game. In all competitions, the last time we failed to score in three consecutive fixtures against the Reds was between November 1994 and October 1995 but we rectified that last night City have won five games in a row in all competitions for the first time since March 2020. Ooh, there you go. John Stones, Room Diaz are yet to taste defeat in any of the eight games in which they have started together for City and have only conceded one goal during that period. Absolutely fantastic. The headlines, The Guardian, John Stones sinks United and returns City to the Carabao Cup final. Uh, yep, there you go. What have we got here? Yep, I'll have a quick look. United United ratings in the Manchester Evening News. Let's have a look at their page. United, you know. United falls short again in the semi. Yeah, that's his fourth semi-final loss, isn't it, Ollie? Poor, poor Ollie. Uh, yeah, the ratings. Here we go. Henderson six. So there you go. He starts off well. I thought, yeah, he was all right. Henderson. Uh, Basak Basak at five. Lindelof six. Didn't really notice him. Harry Maguire five. Terrible slabhead. Luke Shaw five. I liked. I thought it was all right, Luke Shaw. <laughs> Scott McTominay dirty. He should have been well. He should have been the book in the first half. To be honest with you, uh, five. Fred six. I didn't even see him, but I didn't even notice. I think I, I noticed him in the second half, and I forgot he'd been playing. Uh, Bruno Fernandez four. Winging Myvering useless. Uh, Paul Pogba five. Same Winging Myvering useless. Uh, Marcus Rashford four. Yeah, I, mean, I thought he deserved a little bit more than four, but he kept getting apparently offside, and um, obviously should have run at uh, Zinchenko more. Anthony Martial, three. <laughs> so I don't know who does the United stuff, but that's that's quite good to see. You know, if they can do that after every derby game, I'll be well happy. 
Ollie says we can't always rely on Fernandez to get us through one man team, eh? United. Who, who'd, have, who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk that? Let's have a look at the city stuff. Blue show why they're the kings of Manchester. Some great images, and obviously with the thing with the number eights and stuff there. Fantastic. And there's also a mini message using the stones. How we played was a reflection of legend Colin. There you go. Two more players self self isolate after after testing positive. That's Scott Carson, obviously in Cole Palmer. Bernardo giving Pep yet another option in midfield. Yeah, he plays play well against Chelsea, didn't he? Bernardo's coming back into a little bit of form, isn't he? And great headlines. So that's the Manchester Evening News headlines. Just a couple of other papers. I normally don't buy, but I just buy them for the headlines. The Mirror. That was for you, Colin, with a wonderful image of the King there as well on the back. John Stones and the King. Pep's magic formula. Brilliant City pay fitting tribute to Legend Bell by sealing another League, league Cup final. Pep, that's for Colin. City can't afford not to give Kev a 100k pay rise. Well, you have to stick within constraints of what we can afford, mate. And if not, you'll have to go. It's a shame, but there you go. No, no players bigger than the club. We'll still be here after the players go. I love Kevin to bits, but at the end of the day, if you paid a reasonable amount to play for the team, if you want to be, you want to be greedy and go somewhere else. Fair enough. Uh, Man United two, uh, sorry, Man United two, Man United nil, City two. Pep dedicates semi-final win to special bell fit for a king. So yeah, obviously emphasis on Mister Colin Bell again there. And inside now a stones throw away from the final. I assume that's from another cup. Group hug, Stones and Fernando you know, clinch victory, warm front for City manager. Yeah, did you like his gear last night, Pep? City reached four fire on the row, but for Solskjaer, the agony continues. Oh, poor Ollie. We hope Colin is looking down on us. There you go. Solskjaer and Coach Carrick, our powers prevent another cruel defeat. We are cursed. Oh, poor United. Poor, poor me. Poor United. I don't know how to get through a day, the United. I don't know how to survive. It must, must be hell. You know, going a few years without being dominant. I mean, you have won, you have won a couple of cups, haven't you, recently? Uh, well, two or three years ago, I'm not too sure. Uh, yeah, conclusion. Yeah, I think we played within ourselves. We didn't have to do anything. I said that I don't think everyone was on fire. I think we played with about nine and a half men on the pitch last night. I mean, Sterling, particularly in Gundogan, I thought, were, were weak. I wasn't overly impressed with Cancelo last night. Um so yeah, I mean, and I said I was worried the first half. I thought United played quite well. I was quite impressed. I never really worry about Pogba, but you know he Pogba, but you know he can always do something. You know Bruno Hernandez can always do something with these. And Rashford and Martial, of course. But they're sort of not playing as a team. I don't think are they? They're looking for those little bits of you know either getting a penalty or or a, a bit of magic from someone. You know, well, I'm just gonna say Pogba then. But does he does he do any magic? I'm not too sure. But uh, say I don't ever watch United. Unless City are playing them, obviously I did a Premier League thing uh, last season for with another gentleman on another vlog. But uh, so I did watch most of the games, but I don't tend to watch. I have other things to do, so I watch City and that's it. So I, I struggle to watch match of the day these days. So. I wasn't overly impressed with the second half display. I thought, that's the thing about United. I think when we play United, they always seem to have a good half against us. If they play poor the first half, you know they're going to play well the second half. If you think, obviously, back to the obviously the 2-0 lead at half-time at the Etihad a couple of seasons ago, but uh, and then the, the game in the second half. But they seem to only have one half in them for some reason. And usually that's enough to carry them through, isn't it? I mean, they could be 2 0 down against someone and come back and win 3 2. We've seen that. But uh, it's unusual with United. They don't seem to have to be able to do it. City don't do it, but we do it in a different way. We actually finish a game off and then sort of not as not as effective one half to the other. So that's our normal thing. So it is unusual with United, I must admit. Um, so I think we did play a little bit within ourselves. We certainly weren't on top form yesterday, last night, but we were good enough uh, because at the end of the day, United weren't just weren't. You look at some of the scores there, uh, weren't weren't good enough basically, and they certainly weren't good enough in the second half when and they didn't seem to have an answer. They didn't seem once he went behind, they didn't really have an answer, did they? And Ollie didn't seem. Much idea to what to change, whether he had anything on the bench. I'm not sure who's on the bench and whether they're any good or not. Particularly, I know he brought a couple of subs on, but uh, I mean, people like McTominay, I mean, 
bang average players. I mean, they really are bang average players. I mean, there's five or six. I mean, of those players there in, to have in the City team, who, who would you have? I mean, you're struggling, aren't you? I mean, yeah, Rashford on form, but again, he's not... He's experienced now, but he does plays like a, a 19 year old, doesn't he? And that's the thing. And same with Martial, he's experienced, but he plays like a, a teenager. It's, it's very odd. I mean, I said the only one I'd have is Luke Shaw, but <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, anyway, you know, I'm not going to cut. I mean, it's just, I'm not going to say how United, I usually do a bit on the opposition, but United, they're all right. They're doing okay in the league, aren't they? And you can understand, as I said, you can understand why, because they rely on the odd players to get the penalties or the odd. Good goal, etc. But as I said, uh, perhaps Luke Shaw. I'd take Luke Shaw as left back back up, but uh, <laughs> there you go. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. Let me know in the comments what you think, what you thought about the game. It's gone on for about half an hour now. My apologies. I, I try and be as succinct as I can with these, but you, I like to chat, don't I? Yeah, I'll be back, of course, with the Birmingham City FA Cup third round. Uh, review so that or preview review I mean I never I got I get I always get mixed up it's it's I mean the United review for instance that's before the game so is it preview or review I don't, I don't know so that's why I'm calling this the big match analysis now <laughs> just to stop confusion because I get confused anyway so I'll be back with a look at the Birmingham probably on um, Friday or Saturday I'm not sure what day I'll put that out and of course please check out that Colin Bell tribute that I've done recently that's uh, very emotional for me but uh, I'll, I enjoyed doing it and there's some good stuff in there so please if you can check that out that'd be fantastic so thanks for joining me today for this big match analysis whatever you do the rest of the day have a great one look after yourselves look after your friends look after your families more importantly let's all look after each other until we meet again here on the Citizen channel or perhaps you flip over to my film and TV channel all I can say is please stay safe Blues come on City thanks for watching bye bye